is going on my fellow zombie slayers it is an lb here and welcome back to a brand new call of duty black ops 4 zombies tutorial in this video i'll be going over how to pack a punch on the brand new map dead of the night personally i think what they did with pack a punch in this map is very unique and you will find out later why before i begin there is one thing you will need to do and that is interact with the sentinel artifact this is almost too simple Make your way out of spawn through the doors, and after the third door, you will have no other choice but to activate the artifact in order to move on through the rest of the map. Now that you're all caught up, let's begin. Throughout the estate in various rooms, you will find vases. You will need to knife these vases in order to reveal a crystal. However, you will only need to really worry about three. These three will have a blue, green and purple smoke emanating from the top we'll focus on the purple one for now keep in mind that the purple crystal just like the others can be found in any vase i will mention pertaining to its specific area and in this case it's the purple crystal in the master bedroom area the first spawn location is right here in the bedroom hallway on this coffee table to your right the second location is just to your left in the master bedroom at the end of the bed and the final location is to your right in the trophy room on the table next to the knocked over chair. The next part is pretty straightforward. Once you find the correct vase with the crystal in it, you will need to break it. After you break it, you can start killing zombies around it while it collects souls. Quick note, this may seem weird, but I like the little swirls and twirls the souls do now compared to the bland one-way straight path it's always been. Nice touch, Treyarch. The number of souls will vary depending on the amount of people you have in your game. On solo, it only takes about 3-4 to four kills in order to fill the crystal. Once the crystal is filled with souls and will not take any more, you're going to want to walk up to it and interact with it. This will activate a mini cutscene where the crystal flashes an image of a clock. You will need to find that specific clock to activate your first challenge. There are three different clocks and the clock locations are as follows. The first big clock with three holes in it in its body can be found in the dining room directly across from the table right here. The second one can be found in the main hall. Just make your way past Alice towards the front of the estate. This one is pretty easy. The final clock is much more distinct than the other two. This one will be much easier to remember simply because of how much smaller it is. This one can be found on the wall in the billiards room. If you're coming from the smoking room, it's on your left. Once you find your clock, you'll need to interact with it to start your challenge. The challenge now is to stay in the blue circle for approximately 30 seconds. There is no reset penalty for leaving the circle. However, if you do stay in it for the full 30 seconds or until all the blue numbers disappear, you will receive an achievement. Personally, if you're having a tough time, then feel free to leave the circle. It shouldn't be too difficult, but it is very easy to get caught off guard. Once the time runs out, the clock will drop a tuning fork, pick that up, and you are now ready to move on to the next crystal. On to the blue one. This one can be found down in the wine cellar. There are only two vase locations placed here. The first you can see on your screen right now as you walk into the room. The second one can be found to the right of the first one around the corner on this table. After you have found and broken the vase with the crystal in it, you need to again kill zombies around it. Interacting with this one will activate a new mini cutscene, showing you a perk. You will need to find that perk and start your challenge. The trick is that the perks spawn randomly like in Shinonuma or Die Rise. There are also 5 different spots perks can spawn even though there are only 4 perks on the map at a time. The five perk locations are as directed. The first one is actually in the wine cellar to the right of the first blue crystal vase location I discussed. The second one is located just out front of the house leading towards the woods on the forest terrace. The third possible location is in the back of the entrance hall. I don't normally get these locations for the challenge, but I think that just has something to do with them just being less likely statistically. The final two spots are located directly opposite of each other on the map. The first one I'll show you is down the path towards the right of the greenhouse lab. This one is very difficult, so make sure you at least have your specialist ready. The final one is located past the graveyard in the mausoleum. Unlike the previous location, this one is very easy, and I'll explain why now. When you arrive at the perks shown to you in your mini cutscene, the area will be covered in a very, very dreary filter. All you have to do is kill vampires in this location until the filter goes away. When you kill the last vampire, it will drop another tuning fork. 
Now that you have that done, we can move on to the final crystal. I saved the green crystal for the last because it is one of the most difficult ones to memorize, but since you're watching this guide, you should have no problem. The first spawn location for the green crystal is here in the study on this table. The second one is located down these stairs and to the left in the library. And the final location can be found around the corner to the right, staying in the library. Once you have found the correct one, feed its souls and then interact. This time you'll be shown a single image. However, this image can be multiple things. For instance, in my game, I got an image of a maid. But in your game, you can get a scroll, an image of another maid, and a few different images of a woman in red. Your job is to look around the estate for either an object or a painting that corresponds to the image that the crystal showed to you. For the sake of everyone's time, I'm going to show you every possible location these objects can be in. The first item is in the study itself. It's going to be this red lockbox, and this corresponds to the scroll image you may have gotten. The next item is a painting, and it's located in the smoking room. It's of a woman in red holding an umbrella next to an old man. I will note that when you are looking for this painting or any other painting, the crystal will only flash you an image of a woman. In this case, it's the woman in red holding the umbrella. The next item can be found in the entrance hall on the back table. This object is the creepy, worn down looking doll. Moving on, the third object is located in the next room over, the music room. And here you'll find a painting of another woman in red with her hands etched out. The fourth item is yet another painting of a woman in red. This one is located in the east gallery. The next item is located past that, down the stairs, towards the dining hall. This is an image of Meredith from Brave, or just some random redhead with an apple. Another painting can be found across the way in the West Gallery, and this one is a painting of a maid. The next painting is of another maid right around the corner in the tea room, with her hands also crossed out. The final item is found down in the wine cellar. It is going to be the noose on the back of this chair. These are all the items you will possibly need to finish your challenge. Once you have found your item, you will need to interact with it. Luckily, if you don't know exactly which one is yours, maybe you're confused about which lady in red is which. You're in luck. Treyarch made it that when you walk up to the correct item, it will prompt you to interact with it. So if you're truly confused, you can walk up to them in any order and know as soon as you get to it whether or not it is the correct one. Once you interact with your item, a ghost maid will appear. You're usually not supposed to follow strangers, but mom never said anything about ghost strangers. So you should be fine. She will lead you to a random statue outside. Once you arrive, the maid's voice line will activate and the statue will break, dropping the last tuning fork. Now all you have to do is make your way past Atlas, out the front of the door, towards the woods. Once you're outside, you will be greeted with a giant black and red mass. Interact with the stone in front of it and it will start to wilt upward. However, your journey is not done yet. I'm working on a silver bullet guide and that should be out in a few days. Not only will this help kill the werewolf much quicker, but killing a werewolf with the silver bullet so early on is key to getting the upgraded wonder weapon so early on, which is another guide I'm working on. So there you have it, how to pack a bunch on Dead of the Night. Again, I know these tutorials are a little late and everyone else has theirs up already, but I'm on PC and we don't get the maps until a week later. So until I get Black Ops 4 on a PS4, I'm stuck behind nearly everyone else, but I will continue to make these guides going forward. I hope this helped you as much as it helped me making it. Any question pertaining to any steps will be met with a quick answer down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and peace. Heaven with a blunt in the roof, fuck the world. Pain was a part of the game. If